Welcome to another edition of Capital Hoops Live on DMV Stream. Thanks for joining me this week. Uh, this week we are uh, doing this, doing the program a couple days late on Wednesday uh, due to all the championship basketball uh, games that have been played in various leagues over the last two days. It just wasn't going to be possible to broadcast on Monday. Uh, Monday was the Capital Beltway Championship game. Uh, it didn't start till 830 and wasn't able to, to get the show going by the normal 10.30. So we pushed it back to Wednesday. Um, in pushing it back, you're going to see all kinds of recap from the WCAC Championship, Capital Beltway Championship, some of the earlier playoff rounds in the WCAC. Uh, we're going to be previewing the Maryland, you know, Maryland State Tournament. Then there's a bunch of other tournaments. The DCI AA Tournament we're going to, we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about these Maryland and Virginia uh, private school state tournaments as well. So we've got a, a jam-packed show for you guys today. Um, first thing I wanted to I wanted to say before we start is um, on our website capitalhoops.com. I know a lot of you out there participate in the forum in the Capital Hoops website. There's posts made. I mean, every hour there's a new post made. People. You know, just add their two cents on games, on players, on recruiting, on, you know, just kind of the wisp, the rumor mill around high school basketball. So if you do log in, you create a username and password um, for the forum on CapitalHoops.com. There's a contest that I've set up where you need to pick the champions of uh, the Maryland State Tournament, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, the DCI AA uh, Tournament. The Maryland Private School Tournament, the uh, District of Columbia Private State Tournament. So there's, I think, seven championship games. It's all laid out there. And, you know, you guess who's going to win each of the seven respective championships. And whoever guesses the most wins a, pro wins a prize pack. The prize pack will have uh, Capital Hoops t-shirts, DVDs of games we've filmed this year, your choice of a few DVDs. So get in there, submit your picks, and, uh, and you know, the, should the best man win. Um, hopefully it'll create some fun. You'll be able to kind of go along with the teams that you've picked and track their progress throughout the postseason. So that's where we're at with that. I uh, just want to read a little note about DMV Stream. DMVStream.com broadcasts pro amateur college high school athletic AAU and youth games in the D.C. metropolitan area. Uh, you can access these games on your televisions, computers, mobile devices, and more. To find out more about DMV Stream, please visit the website www.dmvstream. A um, couple news and notes before we get into showing you some highlights and then going and looking at uh, some of the brackets from around the DMV. Um, Gonzaga guard Charles Glover. Charles has had an amazing season. Uh, you've seen his highlights on pretty much every show uh, we've done since this show started five weeks ago. I've talked about Charles Glover. I've talked about how you know he's shooting over 50% from the field this year. He's a guard. He you know didn't. I'm not going to say he came out of nowhere because he's been in that Gonzaga system for a while, but. You know, he had an injury last year and just wasn't being recruited very heavily. But he had a sensational year this year. His recruiting picked up. And congratulations, he is now going to Mount St. Mary's to play basketball this uh, next season. Now, there are also going to be a lot more, um, you know, decisions to be made by high school basketball players over the next two to four weeks. Um, when, these, when these teams, when their season ends... A lot of them who have not selected a school yet, that becomes, you know, their main goal is going on official visits, meeting with players and coaches from those schools. So you're going to hear a lot, a lot about recruitment activity in the, in the next couple of weeks. A couple of names that come to mind, uh, Junior Ito from O'Connell has yet to make a decision. Um, he should be going to a high major D1 school. Daxter Miles up in Baltimore um, at Dunbar, in the same boat as Ito, should be going to a high-profile Division One school. 
and there's just tons and tons of more kids who, you know, will start to hear what their process is like and where they're leaning and ultimately, you know, where they're where they decide on going. So look for that to really kind of ramp it up in the next week or two, especially once these, you know, once these teams' seasons end, you know, whether it be by a championship or losing in the playoffs, I think a lot of players will, will kind of turn their focus to, to uh, you know, to next year. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to watch some video. I've got a couple amazing plays that we're going to start off with, and then we're going to watch some highlights from four or five games that I went out and recorded this week. Um, we've got the Capital Beltway Championship, where Princeton Day lost a nail-biter. Um, we've got the WCAC Championship from last night. We've got the WCAC Semifinals. Um, so it should be a jam-packed show. The first highlight we're going to go to, it's a dunk last night. Um, was submitted to me by a Capital Hoops fan. He thought I might like the dunk, and I do like the dunk. So the very first highlight we're going we're gonna to watch is a dunk by Richard Montgomery, senior Tory Sharps. He's made this show before with his uh, above-the-rim play, but this was, this was a dunk that Tory had last night in the Richard Montgomery Northwest playoff game. Here it is. time dunk for Montgomery County product, Tory Sharps. The next highlight we're going to go to will almost definitely be the play, the individual play of the year in the DMV. Let me try to set the stage for you. We're at Gallaudet University on Saturday for the WCAC quarterfinals. The very first game that day, there were four games that day, the first game featured the number four seed, St. John's, and number five seed, uh, DeMatha. In that game, St. John's led by three points with five seconds left. DeMatha hit a layup, cut it from three to one, fouled St. John's. St. John's on the free throw line with just over two seconds remaining. St. John's misses the front end of, uh, of the one and one. DeMatha has the ball. They call a timeout. DeMatha inbounds the ball, and the referee calls a foul 60 feet away from the basket on St. John's. So DeMatha goes to the free throw line, down only one now, with two shots and 2.1 seconds left. Both free throws are made, so now DeMatha's up one. They were down three with five seconds left, and now they're up one, a four-point swing in three seconds. So the St. John's coaches are going irate that you know, a foul was called 70 feet away from the basket when it was just a touch foul. After talking to a couple of people who were at the game, I was not personally at the game. The, you know, they said that foul would not have been called, you know, with four minutes left in the game, let alone to blow the whistle, you know, with two seconds left and the game, you know, hanging in the balance. So St. John's has the ball under their own basket with 2.1 seconds left. And this is what happened. Winner advances to the WCAC semifinals. Loser season over. And this is what happened. shots of the year, you know, to win a game, and the and the score was not tied when he shot it. It's not as if that game would have gone into overtime had he missed it. They were losing. He had one foot just over half court, probably a 40-foot shot, threw it up, 
unbelievable shot. But like I said, probably best shot of the year in, in the DMV. Uh, now, that was Darian Bryant, a junior at St. John's, who made that shot. Um, I want to thank Josh Johnson for giving us the footage of that shot. Again, Josh Johnson, uh, he was the one who recorded that, was nice enough to give me the footage. Um, so from there, we're going to go to, this is the Capital Beltway League semifinals. This was Princeton Day Academy versus National Christian. Winner of this to go on to uh, the Capital Beltway Championship. And we're going to watch some highlights from that game. That's uh, Akil Carr and Anton Waters and Jerron Martin against uh, Jonathan Davis, uh, some other guys from National Christian. So here's some highlights from that game. This game was, when was this game? Uh, on Friday night. Friday night this game was. So without further ado... Both, both teams came out to play real hard. We came out to play. They came out to play. First game of the playoffs that we came out, so we try and get the W so we can, get, we can move on and try to get a championship. Yeah, now, now let's, let's talk about that championship. Last year you won a championship of yeah. Patterson, and now you're trying to win a championship in the first year of, of the Capital Belt. Right, I'm trying to make it three years straight go, that I go to the championship, but I'm trying to win both two years out of, out of right, the one right. I lost. So. I can't talk, talk about the transition up, um, up to Princeton Day. What, what well, has that been like for you? It's been a great, it's been a great like, year for me at Princeton Day. I've been getting more schoolwork done. I've been getting a lot of help, so I've really been focusing on school and basketball. Like at the same time, like I've been having, I got away from everything. So I've been good. Okay. How how is the school here? Is it helping you to get ready for, you know, for your next step? Yeah, it's helping me from get ready to my next step. Helping me to graduation. Right. Try to get my diploma. Right. So right. that's the that's the first thing. Back to back threes there with a couple minutes left. Knock all your free throws down like you've done your whole career. Talk about what it means to get this win and, and go on to the championship game. I mean, it's a big one. You know, it's the first year, I think, the Capital Broadway League, you know. So we're trying to be the first, you know, make history in the league and, you know, get the first championship. So it means a lot, you know, especially to the team and Coach Van and stuff like that. To, to get to our first ever 
league championship game. Uh, didn't think about the championship game. It was getting to the game. Uh, we knew that with Isaac Fleming and with John Davis, those are two tough covers. We uh, were triangling two from the very beginning just to try to control them. We knew we couldn't stop them. We wanted to just control them. And I think it wore on them, especially starting in the second half, that they were just a little bit less effective. But all, although very good, still a little bit less effective. And that allowed us. All right, so that was uh, Princeton Day Academy. Uh, interviews there with Akil Carr, uh, Jerron Martin, head coach uh, Van Whitfield. Uh, that was after they won the semifinals game and before they made it to the championship game uh, to take on Riverdale Baptist. We will have highlights from that championship game in a minute. But before that, we're going to now take you out to Bender Arena and we're going to show you highlights from one of the best games I've seen this year. It was a double overtime uh, WCAC semifinal game between two arch rivals down Virginia, Paul the Sixth and O'Connell. Um, the team split during the regular season, and this game that was just unbelievable. Um, you'll see, you'll see at the end of regulation, Marcus Derrickson from Paul the Sixth had two free throws with no time on the clock. The players weren't standing around the free throw line. The actual red buzzer that goes off. When the, when the clock hits zero, the red buzzer is illuminated around the backboard. Like, you couldn't take that down for him. So, the red the red buzzer is up there, and Der and you'll see what Derrickson does. He needed to make two, both free throws in order to send the game into overtime. And, you know, for a sophomore, for a 6'8 so for a sophomore to be able to stand up there and do that, I mean, that kid is going to be very, very special. So... Let's watch some highlights. This was on, this was on Sunday. This was Sunday afternoon um, at Bender Arena.
of course, you know, with PBI is our rivalry, so, you know, we're going to bring our A game, they're going to bring their A game. So, you know, we got to work harder than them, and, like, whoever wanted it, wanted it, we took it. Junior been through a lot this whole year, you know. He started on top, people started hating on him, saying he was old and stuff like that, you know. And, like, Junior, he really won one. Like, us, his teammates, we believed in him, especially me, you know, myself. I've been around Junior for, for the past three years. And I knew Junior had a fight in him, so I knew, like, if it came to a time again, he had to shoot another free throw, he was going to make So, you know, we just could believe that we can win that game and uh, just came out. Try to get stops and then one offense. You know, Mr. Fritz, all like, we just believe that you go back and defense, try to get a stop. And then the next time I get in line, I just believe myself that I can make it. Um, we don't win a championship. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Junior. Good Thank luck. You. All right, guys. So that was highlights from one of the one of the games of the year here. Um, next thing I'm going to do, I did something a little different for the Capital Beltway League Championship. Instead of showing game highlights like I've been doing, I took the nine best highlights from the game. Uh, we had two cameras at that game, so we've got multiple angles of each play. That game was filled, absolutely filled with highlights. Big time dunks, big time, you know, people crossing people up and shooting threes, big time block shots. I mean, it was a, you know, if you're looking, for, if you're a guy who likes to go see, good highlights as opposed to good basketball. And I know a lot of you out there exist. This was the game for you. So we're going to go back and I'm going to show you the top nine plays of the day. This was in the Capital Beltway League Championship that Riverdale Baptist beat um, Princeton Day by. It was a five-point game. And here's the top nine plays from that game. top place from that game. Now, I still need to show you highlights from the WCAC championship from last night, but before that, we're going to go through um, we're going to go through all the leagues and their brackets very quickly, and then before we sign out, uh, I'm going to show you a little highlight package from the WCAC championship. So, first, these are the Capital Beltway standings. Uh, I just showed you the highlights from that. Um, 
Riverdale Baptist had a first round bye, then beat Friendship Collegiate in the quarters, semis, or, sorry, in the semis, and in the championship, Riverdale Baptist won 95-89. In the MAC, Murray does it again. Third win this year over Sidwell Friends. Murray had one loss in division play this year. Uh, this past Sunday, they captured uh, the MAC championship game. That team is loaded over there. Their coach has done a phenomenal year. I mean, they've got six, seven guys on that team. Any one of them can be the leading scorer on any given night. Uh, just a phenomenal basketball team over there. Um, now we're going to go to the DCI AA. Um, the DCI AA, there's two divisions, the East and West in the DCI AA. They take the first four seeds from the East and the first four seeds from the West, and those are the teams that make the playoffs. However, it gets a little tricky because the one seed from the East plays the four seed from the West. All first-round matchups are teams from the East versus teams from the West. So at the top here, you've got number one in the East, Baloo, versus four in the West, Dunbar. Down here, you've got one in the West, Coolidge, versus four in the East, H.D. Woodson, and so on and so forth. I think uh, Thursday night, that's tomorrow night, will be the opening round. Um, it's going to conflict with the Maryland State Tournament's um, quarterfinals. So, you know, you know, some of you might have a tough decision whether you're going to go see DCIAA or Maryland State Basketball. I think ev everyone thinks Coolidge and Roosevelt are the two favorites to come out of this. Quick look at the WCAC. Um, something we have not talked about yet on the show. Um, Gonzaga, who was 18-0 through the WCAC season, lost in the first round to number eight seed Bishop Ireton. Um, I think Ireton had four or five WCAC wins all year long. Um, this was a crazy game. Bishop Ireton led for you know at, from the very beginning. They had, a, they had a big lead. Gonzaga came back and tied the game at the end of the third quarter and Ireton just Ran away with it in the fourth quarter. Biggest upset of the year, I'm going to go out on a limb and say. Now, this is the route St. John's took to get to the championship. First round bye, then they had that crazy shot to beat DeMatha, and then they beat Ireton to get to the chip. And finally, O'Connell, first round bye, good counsel. Paul the Six, that was a double overtime game. And then the championship over St. John's last night. Now... The Virginia Private League State Championship. This is a state championship amongst private schools. They've been doing it for Virginia for a couple years. They're doing it in Maryland this year for the first year. They're doing it in Washington, D.C. this year for the first year. Now, tonight, um, O'Connell did beat number seven, the Miller School. They advanced to the semifinals of this tournament, which will be at Virginia State University this Friday. Now, there was a huge upset tonight in the Virginia Invitational Tournament. Number one seed, Paul VI, lost at home to number eight seed, Liberty Christian. Paul VI led almost all of that game. Liberty Christian made their move about halfway through the fourth quarter, and they won by four points, so huge upset Everyone, everyone was dying to see a rematch of Paul VI and O'Connell for the championship of this bracket. Now, if we go over into Virginia, they've been they started playing their playoff basketball over a week ago, so they're they've, they've they're you know they've really progressed there. Now, this is the entire state of Virginia. These are at uh, at VCU um, and at Robinson High School, and then. The state semis and state championship is at VCU. Now, there's three teams that we that are from the DMV that have made it to, you know, to this to the Virginia AAA states. Um, Woodson, Battlefield, and Wakefield all have made it. These other five teams are from, you know, Southern Virginia, Virginia Beach, 
Uh, down the Roanoke area has some pretty good basketball. So three teams from the DMV have made it to the final eight here. Last thing we're going to do is look at some brackets. Um, this is the 4A North. Uh, this is the bracket. Uh, who was it? Springbrook had a first round loss to Murgo. Um, Mergenthaler. They Mergenthaler now plays Westminster. All the quarterfinal games are this Thursday. Then um, the semifinals are the the semifinals. The next round is next Tuesday, and then the regional championships are either next Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. So here's a look of the active standings. Um, Sherwood and Paint Branch could be a pretty good game. That's tomorrow night. Now Maryland 4A South. This is PG County. Eleanor Roosevelt's bracket. Roosevelt should win this bracket, but they will face some teams in this in this bracket that could give them problems. Flowers, a four seed, could give them problems. Um, Wise potentially or Duval could give them problems in a regional championship game on March the eighth. And now we go to Magruder's bracket. Magruder is the heavy favorite to come out of the 4A West. However, Churchill has been playing good lately. Kennedy has been playing very well lately. I think those are the two schools that you need to kind of keep an eye on. Now, Clarksburg beat Magruder about three weeks ago. So if these guys, Clarksburg, the 10 seed can match up with Magruder, could be interesting. Uh, next week, we will break the brackets down even more. We will have uh, the first two rounds of the Maryland State playoffs completed. So all we'll be looking at really are regional semifinals and regional championships. So we'll have some more clarity as to you know, what we're looking at in terms of who's going to get to Comcast uh, next week on the program. So the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a highlight package from last night's WCAC championship. Um, again, thanks for watching Capital Hoops Live at DMV Stream. Remember to go on to CapitalHoops.com, go into the forum, get a username and a password, and there's contests in there. If you can pick the DCI AA champ, the Maryland State champs, the, the Maryland private school champs, whoever picks the most right, right. I got a bunch of prizes I'm giving out. Capital Hoops hoodie sweatshirts, Capital Hoops t-shirts, DVDs of games, uh, maybe even make a highlight tape if the person who wins is a player. So get on that, and uh, without further ado, your 2013 WCAC championship, number two seed O'Connell, number four seed St. John.
time we gave this to some football players and they dropped it and broke it. Don't do that, okay? Uh -huh. Be careful with it. Congratulations, well-earned championship. All right, there you go. There you go. Hold that up! Hold that up! Hold that up. Yeah, and this year we, we was a team to, uh, team to beat, and obviously we got the championship.